Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we are going to compare fusion and plasticity. So it's not going to be the video that you are probably expecting, but I get a lot of questions. Why choose plasticity over fusion, or why choose fusion over plasticity? So I figured I would put together a video comparing direct modeling in both softwares. So first things first, what is direct modeling? Well, direct modeling in general is directly manipulating geometry. So things like pushing and pulling faces, rotating faces, um, offsetting edges or slicing faces, uh, slicing edges. These are generally thought of as sort of a quick or a concept style of modeling. And that's because you're not really or typically defining sketches or controlling features with editable parameters. So for example, if we have a cylinder that needs to be 10 millimeters taller, we don't go and edit an extrude feature in plasticity or when we're direct modeling in fusion, we simply grab the face and we move it an additional 10 millimeters. So that's direct modeling. Most CAD programs actually do have direct modeling tools. The tool set's gonna to be limited compared to a program like plasticity, but they've been around for a long time. And some programs and SOLIDWORKS, I'm kind of looking at you, have started labeling them as direct modeling tools and even putting together a toolbar or a, a menu for direct tools. And really the main core of it is offsetting faces, deleting faces, or moving or rotating faces. And that's, that's going to be the bulk of what we have in terms of direct modeling in a CAD program. So then how do fusion and plasticity really stack up against each other? Um, I know I've gotten a lot of comments over the past couple of years since we started covering plasticity because generally we do a lot of parametric CAD and freeform design on this channel. And we've done this with SOLIDWORKS and I've, I've covered, I've made videos for pretty much every CAD program out there from uh, Onshape, AutoCAD, Inventor, you know, you name it. I probably have done a video for an e-learning site or somewhere. So how do we use Fusion as a direct modeler and how do we use plasticity and where are the where are the real differences or the main differences? So if you're trying to figure out fusion versus plasticity, I think at the core, we need to understand that they're different because fusion is a parametric modeler, meaning that by default, we create sketches. We turn those sketches into features and we turn those features into components of larger assemblies. And the really the missing link between that workflow and plasticity is the fact that we've got um, manufacturing environment so we can create tool paths. We've got an environment for simulation so we can do mechanical simulation, plastic part flow. We've got freeform modeling, which plasticity, you know, kind of has something like that with raised degree, but it's different. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've just got more, uh, a more complete engineering package of tools, whereas plasticity is not really aiming to be that kind of program. So they are at the core, they're different. So again, this video is mainly going to talk about the overlap between the two in direct modeling. So how does direct modeling work in Fusion? Well, we've got three sort of main workflows. The first workflow is just to create your design using primitives. So for example, if I select a cylinder and I select this uh, plane, I start to create a cylinder and pull this up. Basically, what we have here is a dialog box where we can configure the cylinder, right? So 45 millimeter diameter, 50 millimeter height, say, okay. It's going to create a cylinder primitive in the timeline. Now, cylinder primitive can be edited. We can right click and go back and say, well, really, I meant for this to be 50 millimeters and hit enter. But there's no sketch associated with it. Now, the primitives, there are a couple of them. We've got box cylinder sphere, torus, coil, and pipe. These primitives are going to be you know, fairly similar to primitives you create in plasticity. Now, the main difference, again, is that there's a feature captured in the timeline that we can edit and go back to, whereas in plasticity, we generally have to offset the face to make it bigger, right? So that's going to be the core difference if we're capturing history in a timeline. The second thing or the second way that we can use Fusion as a direct modeler is to create what's called a base feature. Now, a base feature is essentially a, a container in the timeline where we can then do a bunch of direct modeling stuff. So for example, let's go ahead and create a primitive box and I'll just do it over here. I'm gonna pull this out, maybe make some adjustments. Maybe I want to round some corners. So let me round uh, these off up here. And then maybe I want to shell this out. And then maybe let's go ahead and let's round the inside corners as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those up, maybe to right there. 
And then I'll add just a, a final fillet on the outside here. Let's do something small. All right, so we did a bunch of things. You can see over here in the browser, we've got extrude, fillet, shell, a couple fillets. Now, this is a little misleading because I can't right click and do anything. I can't edit that extrude. If I select move copy, what this is actually doing is moving the faces around. So you can see it selected all the faces and I can you know, kind of play around with it and I can do some, some funky stuff. I'm gonna hit cancel here. And same thing with the shell. If I select move copy, basically what this is doing is it's allowing me to make some direct editing changes. So you can see I'm, I'm moving it up and down I'm changing the depth of it. You can say, okay. The fillet's a little different because we can actually edit the fillet. So for example, I could select faces and then I could pull this and I could make those fillets smaller. It's kind of fake. And what I mean by that, it's kind of fake because it's not really editing the fillet. It's just offsetting the faces, kind of like move copy. Now, when we're done with this and I select finish base feature, all of that stuff in the browser goes away because it's contained in that base feature. So if I right click, and I edit this thing, it's gonna all come back. If I wanna get rid of some of it, what I can do is right click and dissolve it and get rid of it out of here. And that doesn't mean that we can't come back and like use press pull and change the size of that. It just means that it gets rid of it from the browser here. Again, finishing the base feature. We now have a solid body. Uh, it's a base feature. There's no history that's really captured with it. And it's just basically a single feature in the timeline. From here, we could still do more, like we could say we wanna shell this and we could continue to create a shelled feature or let's make it smaller. Actually, let's make it bigger. Uh, but those new features would be captured in the timeline. The last way that we can really use Fusion as a direct modeler, and again, I'm not talking about freeform modeling or, or really anything else, just solid bodies and basic prismatic modeling is to go down and turn off history capture. Now, so when we turn off history capture, basically what we have here is we're in a base feature. We're just kind of put into a base feature because everything that we do, if it can, will be captured in the browser. So in this case, let me just do a Taurus and I'll do it over here and make that a little bit bigger. We don't have a any history being captured here this is just a revolve and if we select move copy again it's really just moving the, the selected faces if we want to turn history back on we can so capture history and now we basically just have a base feature that is containing all of those three bodies there are all the sketches that we did originally um, or features that we made did originally in the timeline they're all gone and we're back to this sort of just primitive bodies in a single design now, there are some other nuances to it that I'm not really going to go into. Things like when you're in direct modeling, you don't have the ability to capture movement of components, so there's no mechanical motion and joints and things like that, uh, which we don't really have in plasticity anyways because there's, there's no constraint system, there's no um, motion or links or, or stuff like that. So those are the, the three basic workflows. And again, there are kind of these in-betweens because... We can do all these parametric models and we can do base features and primitives, but from just a purely direct modeling standpoint, talking about primitive creation, a base feature, or turning history completely off, those are the three main direct modeling workflows. So now if we're talking about plasticity, how is this really different? Well, again, at the core, it's built on the same 3D kernel in the back end, so the geometry is going to be largely defined the same. So the way a cube is defined is the same. One of the main differences in plasticity is going to be the ease of access for certain things. So for example, if I am on face selection, I select this face, I can just quickly pull it and then right click to accept it. In Fusion, we have to select it and then we have to invoke the shortcut and then uh, yeah, it just it's like one extra step. Not a huge deal, but just a little bit of extra. The other thing is that we don't have access to all the same tools in plasticity. Uh, and what I mean by that is plasticity has more direct modeling tools because it is at its core a direct modeler. So for example, if I select this face and hit O to offset, I can quickly build out a shape. Whereas in Fusion, if we just hop back to Fusion for a second, um, if I wanted to do that, I would need to select this face and start a sketch 
and then create and extrude off of that sketch. And there are ways that we can speed this process up. So for example, if I select a face and hit the shortcut key O, which is sketch offset, offset's already invoked and I can offset that inward. I can finish the sketch. So uh, we can say, okay, finish the sketch, select it, extrude it, um, and then hit okay. So it's, you know, it's basically like going from doing this very intuitively by hitting offset and then, you know, maybe pulling geometry out very quickly and easily to having to go through a couple of extra steps to get that same type of functionality. Um, and with that, let's talk about curves for a second. So curves in plasticity, I can use as a knife tool, for example. So I could split this top face up and I could pull it very quick and easy for me to do. We can also use things like um, isoparams. So, you know, so for example, I could break this face up very quickly and easily, and I could do the same thing over here, you know, maybe pull a stair step like that. When we try to do something like that in Fusion, again, it comes down to, well, first we got to create a sketch, even if we're doing direct modeling. And then I need to draw a line. And then I need to use a split face command. So select the face to split, select my splitting tool. It could be a plane, a sketch, surface, whatever. And then I need to pull this up. So it is still possible, but it's like seven steps instead of two, right? So that's, again, where it comes down to a direct modeler or a, an intentional direct modeler like plasticity has a much more organic approach and a much more user-friendly approach to this type of modeling because Fusion can do it. It's just not geared toward it. It's just, it's not made for that type of workflow. Even if we go into a base feature, even if we turn history off, the tools are just still going to be a little bit more complex. Now, of course, there are going to be pros and cons to each, right? There, there's going to be a limit to things like dimensional accuracy. Now, I'm not saying that the CAD models aren't accurate in plasticity, but what I mean is we're not going to define a, uh, you know, a two point rectangle and say that this is 1200 and then this is maybe 800. We are typically not going to go back to that curve and, you know, maybe change its size and then expect the object that was created off of it to update. Like that's just not how it works in fusion. However, that would maintain a link. There would be a parametric link there if we wanted it to be, or we could use it as a direct modeler, like a base feature where there is no link involved. So in plasticity, we can use things like, um, dimensions and I could change this to 1500 and I can update that size. And again, the, you know, this is something that plasticity has started doing in version 24 and in version 25, giving us the ability to actually use numerical inputs to update things like the location of holes or the size of these primitives. Once the shapes get to be a bit more complex, so like over here, we lose the ability to do that. So once you start stacking geometry, whether you're adding or removing from a design, you start to lose the ability to have some of those types of controls over you know, original size of primitives and things like that. But at the core, again, plasticity is intentionally a direct modeler where fusion is intentionally a parametric modeler. It's meant to be driven by dimensions and sketches and dimensions controlling features. So at the end, again, I get a lot of questions. Why choose one software over the other? Well, both of them can be used for 3D printing. I've shown that in several videos. We do designs for 3D printing in plasticity and in fusion. Fusion does have a slight edge there because we can control offsets between multiple components with dimensions in a sketch. So for example, if we were, if we were going to have a 3D printed multi-part assembly and I needed 0.04 millimeters uh, or 0.4 millimeters um, between components, I can drive that with a sketch. In plasticity, that's a bit different. We have to be intentional with offsetting geometry. You know, so we would need to select a face. We could um, duplicate that and then we can move it. Um, you know, we could bring this back a specified amount so that we would have the gap. And what happens is if we scale everything up in plasticity, if we need to make it bigger or smaller, then what ends up happening is those offset values are not correct anymore. So it takes a little bit more pre-planning and careful modeling to do things like 
multi-part or print-in-place 3D printed designs. Whereas Fusion has a slight edge there because of the sort of parametric nature of creating sketches and driving features off of that. But really the reason why you would choose plasticity is going to be one speed of concept modeling. You can crank out models quicker than you can in Fusion. Now I've been using Fusion and, and CAD in general for many years, um, quite a long time. I don't really want to think about it, but basically you can just speed up your workflow. So if your intention is to create models for games or visual effects or rendering or animation or something like that, and you're not worried about this edge being exactly, you know, 125 millimeters long, then it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit big or a little bit small because it's at the end of the day, if you are creating a video game asset or if you're creating something for a render or visualization and not for manufacture, you don't have to worry about things like tolerance or stack up between components or whether or not a press fit bearing is going to fit in a hole once it's manufactured. Those are the kinds of things that you really fall back into a parametric CAD program for. And again, there's a crossover, right? If you want to use plasticity for 3D printing, you can. If you want to use fusion for concept modeling, you can. And they do have that overlap, which is why I think I get quite a few questions. Hopefully this video helped. I know it was a bit longer than I intended, but hopefully that helps drive a little bit better understanding on direct modeling and what both programs can kind of do and where plasticity does kind of win out and where Fusion falls a little bit short in the direct modeling category. So if you have any questions on this, or do you, if you want to see more specific examples, like uh, part modeled in both programs so we can compare them, then please let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and do that. Remember, if you're looking to purchase Plasticity, we are an affiliate, so lead 10 at checkout will save you 10% and helps out the channel. But if you have any questions on this or other content, leave them in the, uh, in the comments of the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.